Welcome to Clean Marie. My name is Marita. So in my last video, I was telling y'all that my mom was coming. She's on her way here today. And then I was just going to wait till the day of her arrival to actually like wash the linen. So I ended up just washing the sheets and hopefully everything is like washing and dry. I think I'm on drying the comforter and then I'll be done. Y'all yeah, know this is what my room currently looks like. Y'all remember if you've been following me. I had did my 2024 vision board and this year I decided to frame it because somebody influenced me to do that okay I was really ready to add some curtains y'all I wanted to even take these pictures down I could not find any pink fall decor I went to Hobby Lobby and I'm just surprised with all the pumpkins and everything in Hobby Lobby they don't even have no pink pumpkins y'all I went to Michael's they had two two little pumpkins this about this small and it was the um the velvet foam kind and i really wanted ceramic you know like i wanted a nice little glam to my room anywho we're gonna deep clean this room we're gonna clean this fan because it's nasty i need to wipe the walls down so let me show you guys i don't know if y'all can see the dirt i don't even think y'all can see the dirt sure you can see the dirt so in this video I ended up forgetting to clean the fan just so you know So the day you'll be watching this video, it's October the 9th, 2024. It's actually Wednesday. And um, I'm going to give you a story time. And it'll be a little bit of getting to know me because if you don't know my testimony, you don't know me at all, okay? I am a breast cancer survivor. The ironic thing about it is I was diagnosed with breast cancer on this very day. It's so crazy to be diagnosed with breast cancer during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, it was October the 9th when I was diagnosed, but I had spent the whole year and a half trying to figure out what was wrong with me because I knew something was wrong with my body. I kept experiencing chest pains. Um, I kept going to the ER. I kept going to the doctor. They were running all these tests. Every time I went, I would get a blood test, an EKG, um, cat scans x-rays and they would just come up with their own assumptions of maybe i was lifting too many heavy things at work um the blood work didn't show any signs of cancer and i would i would do this for a whole year and a half because the pain just never went away and i felt like something was wrong something has to be wrong with you if you're not feeling right and it's been lasting for this amount of time so um, they decided to schedule me for a mammogram. I went to the mammogram and um, they, they, you know, they said everything seemed to be okay. So they, they had me to do, um, um, what do you call it? An ultrasound because I had dense tissue. So in the ultrasound, the lady stated that she saw something, but oh, it was just probably a cyst. So because God is good, time passed and eventually whatever that was that she said was a cyst started to grow. But it was just like a size of like a marble. It was really, really small. So I thought maybe I slept wrong. You know, sometimes I have my phone all up in my chest, balled up all crazy at night, you know. So I, I tried to, you know, just brush it off like maybe something was wrong with me, you know. So the couple of days, though, that not, that not never loosened. So they scheduled me another mammogram and they decided to um, schedule, they scheduled me another ultrasound, I'm sorry, and they decided to um, 
give me a bobsy but even during that time they just really was so sure that this is probably nothing you know i was young i wasn't um the age that you know they say you're supposed to get this and all of this stuff and it wasn't hereditary for me so they just they named it something like a hemorrhage i forgot what the the, the assist or something was called it's probably just one of those it's nothing to be concerned about so um I got the biopsy during this time though I can't remember if it started to grow or not I think it was still the size of a marble um so I never forget this day October the 9th y'all I was in the kitchen and I got a phone call it's so crazy to think that you get a phone call you know because as time you know progress I'm like you know who, who really gets a phone call stating someone has breast cancer you know like why not call me into the office but anyway they they called me and they said you know that i was i had breast cancer she couldn't give me much detail of course she probably was just a nurse or something she couldn't give me much detail but she told me that someone was going to contact me and it was going to let me know you know my next steps but as i'm on this call gosh somebody had to be calling me okay <laughs> but as i'm on this call i'm just like how can you call me someone and tell them they have cancer and then hang up i didn't want to hang up the phone you know like i felt at the moment like someone had a gun up to my head and it was about to kill me that's the only way i could describe it this, this is what it feels like you know I didn't want to hang up the phone. It felt so dark in the kitchen. It felt so dark in the room. You know, I felt like I, I just I can't even explain the feeling. So she she told me somebody was gonna call, contact me or whatever. So you know, we got off the phone. I just remember feeling like I had some poison in my breast, and I just felt like I, I wanted to just cut it out. Like let, we need to just get this out right now. You know. So I began to call everybody that I was close to, my family, my friends. And I remember everyone just, you know, trying to be positive, uplifting, encouraging. They would give me, they was quoting me scriptures. They were praying for me. And it was at that moment I had decided I didn't want to call nobody else. I don't want nobody else to pray for me. I didn't want anybody else to quote me a scripture. I didn't want anybody else to tell me anything because it was at that moment I realized it's so easy for someone to tell you something when they ain't going through it. And I didn't want nobody to pray for me. At the time, I didn't realize that I was really angry. I was angry with God. I just sat up and spilled all that Windex. It's gonna make a wet spot. And it's blue. I'm so mad. <sighs> so a few days have passed and well, I don't know why out of all the people I ended up talking to that God had this one particular person to end up calling me and she would be the person that changed my whole mind. She called and she was like, Marita, your life don't end here. She was like, sister, you better get up. And she said, you better go in that room and you better close that door. I'm sorry, y'all. I get so full because it's a happy cry. And she was like, you better cry out to God like you ain't never did before. She was like, your life don't end here. And it was just something about her words that might have been like everybody else's, but God was using the hurt to get to me. And I never forget, I, I, I took a shower. I, I got in that shower, I held my breast. And I was screaming and crying and praying and repenting to God. I let him know how I felt because he already knew my heart. I let him know that I was mad. I was angry with him. And after I got through repenting, I started praying and I started crying. And I pleaded the blood of Jesus over my life. 
And y'all don't think I ever cried and prayed so hard in my life. Because it's like my sister friend Coco said, it's something about them kids. When you got kids and mine was young at the time. And it's just something about them that made the whole situation so much worse. And I'm telling you that prayer and that crowd to God was something else. Do you hear me? <laughs> but I, I prayed and I just let them know. I was very honest. Because see, what, what people don't understand is that God likes you to be honest. He already knows you. He already know you, what you're thinking. So I was very honest and letting him know I was angry. I was mad. How could you do this to me? You know, it seemed like one point in time when people die was like, how did they die? Did you know, somebody kill them. But it seemed like lately it was like somebody was, so many people was dying that it was like, well, okay. Was it a health issue because cancer had got so big? And I just remember I always thinking like, Lord, please don't let it happen to me. And it did. And so um i ended up going to god first of all blessed me with some great doctors i had um my breast doctor that you know did my uh breast surgery that actually removed my breast and then i had the breast doctor that did my reconstructive surgery and then i had my oncologist you know the one that did the my treatment so my treatment um was told to me by actually the doctor who was going to remove my breast? Don't get me to saying what all these doctors' labels are. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna state it like that, okay? So I never forget. I went to um, the doctor, the surgeon that was gonna remove my breast. He was actually the one that was gonna give me my care plan, and he was so shocked. Like you came here by yourself. I didn't know what he meant at the time. You know, this has never happened to me before, so I didn't know. I'm I, I'm I'm very. I'm. I don't know if it's because I'm the only child, y'all, but I, I'm very comfortable by myself i like being alone most of the time you know what i'm saying so it was nothing for me to go to this doctor appointment by myself that's what i like to do i like to be alone and i understood after it was all over though why he asked me that because i never in my life as much as i like to be alone and it is my comfort zone it was the one time that i wished i would have had a room full of people that loved me in that room because i'm telling you when i was sitting there he was writing on this um board with a marker and he was writing my care plan and it was like i was sitting y'all at my own funeral that's how i felt and the first thing that he wrote on that care plan that i loved and i love to this day is that he he he, he has to have a close relationship with god because his first thing he's put on there was prayer and I noticed every time, you know, we was about to have surgery, whatever was going on, he was always praying first. And I loved that. And that's why I felt like God was with me the whole step of the way, even when he came to my doctors. And so um, he wrote out the whole care plan. And that's when I learned that I was. I was stage two, grade three and her two positive. And so, you guys, I ended up, overall, I ended up having to have chemo, I believe it was every three weeks for six months. Um, I didn't, God is good, I didn't have to have radiation. Um, chemo was really strong thing. I see why a lot of people don't like to get it. Um, my hair came out the first treatment. Um it made my nails lift off the nail bed, my both my hands and my feet. My nails turned dark. To this day, some of my fingernails, you probably can't tell, are not all the way on my nail bed. I think it's just my ring finger and um, on my my big toe. One of my big toes never really restored correctly. Um, I would sit down and it felt like my bones would sit down, relax like two seconds later. So it was kind of hard. Um, I learned a lot. So I started to eat before chemo because I learned that after three days of chemo, I lost my taste for like seven days. So I would eat real good <laughs> before chemo. Um, I, um, 
what else um my, my one of my eyes was starting to water really really bad and like nothing would help it and thank god for google because i found out that someone else used this called Bion tears and it's the only thing that saved my eye like it would run all day every day it was so irritating just one eye and so it was just a lot of side effects from it or whatever and um so i ended up getting um a double mastectomy Since this was laying on the couch, y'all already seen, I'm just going to take this back. This is like the only pink pumpkin pillow I could find. I told you I couldn't find no pink decor. I got this at five below. I was about to just settle. I'm going to take it back. Every time I look at it, I'm just like, no, I'm ready. I'm going to put it on my bed one more time, but I don't think it's going to work. I only had cancer in my right breast. So the reason why I chose a double mastectomy is because that little marble ended up progressing into like the only way I could describe it is like you know that little hotel soap that little small soap you get at the hotel the real tiny one um it's probably like a size of your palm of your hand it ended up getting that big and so um really fast it was really uh it was it was kind of aggressive I think that's what they were saying so anyway my whole thing was if it took you a whole year and a half, because as much as the doctors tell you to go to the doctor as soon as you feel a symptom or sign, if they don't know, you're going to the doctor for nothing. So I went to the doctor for you a whole year and a half before someone even told me what's wrong with me. So in my head, if cancer is this hard to find because it's so tiny, or, you know, you don't see it at all, which the doctor agreed with me, you know, when I was saying this, I want you to remove both of my breasts, you know, so that was the reason behind me getting a double mastectomy. So if you're unsure about yourself, definitely seek a second opinion, a third, a third, a fourth, like never give up on you, okay, because it's only one of you, okay, and you know, doctors see a lot of people, so you got to be important to yourself, you know, um, demand a biopsy. Um, just never be so comfortable with their decision. If you're uneasy, seek help somewhere else, okay? Because sometimes we don't want anything to be wrong with us. But your conscience will never fail you, okay? If you feel like something ain't right, something isn't. literally just took the upholstery cleaning off my granny house like it's been it here by the door in another corner forever because i tend to take it <laughs> as soon as i mess up my bed i take i don't really feel like doing that anyway but man it is gonna mess up my mattress you could tell you could see the blue and it's probably gonna make a wet spot <sighs> I hate that for me that's what's wrong with my daughter mattress upstairs is those were new practically new mattresses they just wasn't comfortable for me and my back so they not even old but i spilled some tea on it and i know they sell them waterproof mat uh mattress covers i actually had one on maya's after i gave her those because i didn't want it to get any worse because i tried to wipe it up and baby, it made the ring even bigger. So I had a double mastectomy with reconstructive surgery. And I have always been this type of person, y'all, where, you know, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. I don't know if it's the only spoiled child in me, but I have always been like this. So after my breast cancer journey, I am, I'm worse. You know, I, I'm definitely the one, if I'm, if I want to do it, I'm going to do it. If I don't want to do it, I ain't going to do it, but yeah, this, this journey really changed my life. You know, when I went in that shower and I surrendered to God, it was like my mindset was at, was at ease. I didn't want to die, but I, I, the, the situation was much lighter. It was like I gave it to him. So I began to to almost just really live every day like it was my last now that i think about it that's what i was really doing i took my kids on their first airplane flight y'all know i love to travel but my kids were so young they hadn't been on the airplane yet i took them on their first flight i started teaching them the word of god because if if anything else if they don't if you don't know nothing else as long as you got jesus like that's the only way that me, they got me through life so i wasn't taking my kids to church like i needed to so um i had 
you know, start teaching them scriptures. I started teaching them how to pray. And I started teaching them, if anybody else tell you that God ain't real, do not believe them because God is very real. And I would just have Bible study with my kids. And I started doing little, um, put, you know, worksheets with them. Like we was in Bible school and it was really enjoyable. But if nothing else, I wanted my kids to know God, you know, because if you don't know him you're missing out okay because he is my way maker and he is the reason why i'm here to tell his story god is good god has always been with me and i thank you so much i thank you guys so much for listening to my testimony yeah between me and you i'm so glad well i almost thought the whole house was gone because jay is so quiet in his room but my daughter gone my husband gone it just be so all the ladies, I know you feel me when you, the ones that's married with a house for the kids, baby, I know you feel me when you, when I say, when it's just quiet and everybody gone, the feeling is just so different. The house starting to feel clean, because you know, sometimes you be running around cleaning and you just feel like you just keep cleaning the same, or keep cleaning the same spot or just, it just be a lot going on. And then people all over the place and they all in your way. It just be a lot. You know, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting somewhere just because the house is empty and silent. So all this stuff again, y'all already know where it's going, baby. Comment below where it's going. If you've been subscribed to my channel, I got anxious. If you've been subscribed to my channel, tell me where all this is going. I ain't even got to tell you. Okay, you guys, so I ended up having to put a towel on the mattress. I didn't want to, I didn't feel like cleaning it with the upholstery cleaner and it was still wet. So I, I did it this way. I guess the gold pumpkin really don't match. My mom convinced me the pink one was better. So I ended up just staying with the pink one. And just remember there's nothing too big for God. I love you. God loves you. And thanks so much for watching.